you to live the dream because I'm not living the dream because I'm special. I'm living the dream because I was obedient to the call of the dream. So I want you to leave here today thinking about what is the dream for you? What is God's dream for you? What does the creator's dream hold for you? So often we spend our lives wishing and hoping and hoping and wishing and desiring things. This is what I know for sure. You don't get what you wish for. You don't even get what you hope for. You get what you believe. So what is it you believe and know to be God's dream for you? The dream is greater than anything that I could have imagined. And I used to dream the dream driving through the white people's neighborhoods. We drive through the white people's neighborhoods and you'd see their fancy houses. Some of them had gates, but all of them had trees. And I remember when I first came to Baltimore, I, I, I made friends with a wonderful woman named Arlene Weiner. She was the wealthiest person I'd ever met. And I went to her house. Once I got inside, I could see from her kitchen window six trees in the front yard. I thought, oh, rich people have trees. So as life would have it, I was standing in my kitchen window about three years ago in California, making coffee in the morning. And I was looking out the window and I saw the six trees. But listen to me. I was making, making, making the coffee. I saw the six trees. I went out on the porch to actually count the six trees. And this is what I noticed, that I could dream the six, but beyond the six trees in my kitchen window are 3,687 trees. I dreamed the six. That's as much as my, 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 my small mind and my imagination could hold for myself. I dreamed the six, but God can see beyond the six. Can see beyond the six because there was a bigger dream for me. And I'm here to tell you there is a bigger dream for you, Essence. There's a bigger dream. And so the key, the secret, the magic is to surrender to God's dream for you. To quit fighting against and pushing against and disallowing against and resisting against and trying to tell the creator, the universal forces, divine intelligence, what you are supposed to do and get still and know for sure what his dream the dream is for you. The third law of motion in physics says for every action, it's called Newton's law. And it says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So what does that mean? That means everything that you are putting out into the world, every action, bam, there is an equal and opposite reaction. It means no matter what you do, the energy of what you do, what you say, and most important, the energy of who you are is going out into the world, into your home, into your relationships, and that energy is always coming back to you. You are responsible for the energy that you are putting out into the world because that very energy, bam, is coming right back to you every single time, whether you believe it or not, because it is law. It is law. It is law that what you put out into the world is coming back. Before you even think about a thing, you have an intention for the thing. And that the intention is going to determine the outcome. That's why the same people can go to the same church service and somebody walked down the aisle just to be seen to put some money in the church. And somebody else who just goes and just has a little bit to offer. The intention with which you give 
the intention with which you serve determines the outcome. So I use this principle of intention for everything. I don't do anything without thinking about what is the real reason? What is the real motivation? What is the energy of my intention that's going to go into my thoughts and action and then be returned back to me? And I've used that principle for every area of my life. I don't do anything and I ask that you consider not doing anything that you don't truly intend. Do not allow yourself to be marginalized and defined by other people's agendas and intentions because the power of your story lies in your personal intention. Now, everybody works hard and everybody has their own dreams, but this is what I learned. When you can surrender to the dream, you get to live in the space of the higher power. You get to live in the space that you purposefully have come to earth to claim for yourself. It taught me when you've done everything you can do. You don't just have to stand. When you've prayed and cried and stood and tried some more and sacrificed and wanted and dreamed and held on and believed and got turned down and turned back and turned around. It taught me that when you've done everything you can do, surrender all. Surrender all. Because there's a bigger dream. There's a bigger dream waiting for you, just waiting for you to step into it, to step into it. Your life is big, your life is huge. And we spend so much time wanting to be in somebody else's life. And you don't get honored, you don't get revered, you don't get celebrating wanting what somebody else has And you get no credit messing in somebody else's territory. Or trying to have power over something you have no control. Another one of my favorite teachings is the Wizard of Oz. When the witch, Wicked Witch of the West says, go away from here because you don't have any power here, you have no power in any territory other than your own. Oh, but you are the master of that. You get to be the master of your own fate. You get to be the captain of your own soul. And if you just manage that, if you just took care of your territory, oh, the glorious, 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 wondrous, wondrous opportunities and possibilities that are waiting for you. So the question is, what are you resisting? What are you pushing against? What are you not allowing? What are you blocking? Because you have this idea of who and what you're supposed to be instead of leaning into the dream that's already been created and waiting for you.